Good evening, councillors, officers, members of the public who've joined us in the gallery and those who are watching at home. Welcome to the April meeting of Crangamite Shire Council. I'll begin by introducing the members of council and officers around the table this evening. To my left is Deputy Mayor Geraldine Kennedy, Councillor Joe Beard, Councillor Kate Macon, and to my right is Councillor Laurie Hickey and Councillor Nick Cole. Our acting CEO, Mr. Michael Tudball, Ms. Brooke Love, for his service to the council and wish him all the very best in his uh, new endeavours. Thanks, James. And we begin with the prayer. We ask for guidance and blessing on this council. May the true needs and well-being of our communities be our concern. Help us, who serve as leaders, to remember that all our decisions are made in the best interests of the people, culture and the environment of the Crangamite Shire. Acknowledgement of country. We acknowledge the traditional custodi custodians of the land around Crangamite Shire, the Eastern Ma and Wadawurrung people. We pay our respects to all Aboriginal elders and peoples past, present and emerging. Mr CEO, apologies for this evening. Uh, Councillor Vogels is an apology this evening, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Has there been any declarations of conflict of interest raised? No, there has not. Thank you. <coughs> Councillors, there is recommendation. We have two recommendations for the minutes of the council meeting held on the 28th of March and a special meeting on the 4th of April. Someone would like to move those as a block, please. Councillor Macon, Councillor Hickey, thank you. Is there any questions or concerns about the minutes, councillors? All in favour? Carried. Now, before we begin our meeting, we do have a citizenship ceremony, so I'd ask uh, a councillor to suspend standing orders while we conduct this ceremony. Thank you, Councillor Cole. And a seconder, Councillor Kennedy. Thank you. All in favour? Carried. So, councillors, if you'd just like to, to move down to the other end of the chamber and we'll carry out the, the citizenship ceremony. citizenship and multicultural affairs. Thank you for deciding to become an Australian citizen. Today you join a nation that is one of the world's most successful multicultural societies with around half of all Australians either born overseas or with at least one parent born overseas. In Australia everyone can be proud of who they are and everyone should be respected, valued and feel a sense of belonging. We're privileged to share this beautiful country with the world's oldest continuing culture. This is a fundamental part of who we are. For more than 60,000 years, First Nations people have cared for country. Appreciating and understanding this truth is a vital part of what it means to be an Australian. Australians are united by our shared commitment to democracy and the rule of law and to freedom of speech, religion and association. Our diversity is our greatest strength and we prosper by embracing this. We believe in a society in which everyone is equal, regardless of their gender, faith, sexual orientation, age, ability, race, national or ethnic origin. Ours is the land of the fair go, in which respect and compassion underpin our care for each other and our willingness to reach out to those around us in times of need. By becoming an Australian citizen, you make a commitment to these values and to contribute to the ever-evolving Australian story. On behalf of the Australian Government, heartfelt congratulations on becoming an Australian citizen. Andrew Giles. Now, Chris, if you'd like to repeat after me. From this time forward, under God, I pledge my loyalty to Australia and its people, whose democratic beliefs I share, whose rights and liberties I respect, Rights and liberties, and liberties and, and, respect, and respect 
and whose laws I will uphold and obey. Well done, congratulations. <laughs> Someone like to move us out of standing orders, please. Thank you, Councillor Beard, second of Councillor Kennedy. All in favour? Carried. Uh, there are no deputations or presentations this evening. Um, there is an opening forum question coming. Councillors, uh, item seven, the committee reports. Mount Lura and Mount Sugarloaf Management Committee annual report, budget and committee appointments. Uh, Mrs Lindley, please. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. The purpose of this report is to present the 2022-23 Mount Lura and Mount Sugarloaf Management Committee annual report and to provide advice to Council on the appointment of three community representatives to the committee. The Mount Lura and Mount Sugarloaf Committee is a community asset committee of the Council and was first established in 1995. The committee's role is to implement the management plan and risk management plan for those facilities 
and the committee comprises six community representatives and one council representative. The community representatives are elected to the committee for a three year term with two positions advertised annually. And over the past year, the Mount Laura and Mount Sugarloaf Management Committee has worked to achieve the management plan's vision in which the reserves are an environmental, social and geological asset and a place for diverse recreational and educational activities. Um, they're also a regional tourist destination where people can reconnect with nature in a safe and scenic environment. The work undertaken by this volunteer committee is incredibly valuable and members are to be congratulated for their contribution over the past year. Council is also required to advertise two vacant committee positions annually with terms of three years. And in addition to those two positions, a recent casual vacancy was also advertised for a remaining uh, term of one year. These positions were advertised for a period of four weeks over March this year and Council received four nominations for the three available positions. The recommendation of the committee is for Carolyn Dinehoven and Francis Grundy to be reappointed to the committee for a three year term and Mary Graham to be appointed for a one year term. These three nominees meet the selection criteria and current and future skills required by the committee. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mrs. Inley. Councillors, there's a recommendation. Someone like to move the recommendation? Councillor Hickey, do I have a seconder? Councillor Cole, thank you. Councillor Hickey. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, the committee of management is very important to uh, oversee the uh, risk management of many of our community assets, and this is um, this is certainly one of uh, one of our, our important ones. The, um, there's a lot of people who use the, the mount um, for recreation, for educational, for geological studies. It's a very significant um, area and uh, the committee of management around the uh, Mount Sugarloaf and Mount um, Lura Reserve do a fantastic job in uh, coming together and giving up their time freely to be able to oversee the management of this uh, facility. Um, uh, receive the uh, excuse me, pleasure to receive the annual report, and also to recommend and to um, and to vote for the uh, for the people who are uh, being added to the committee or being reinstated on the committee. But also remind uh, the wider community that there is a friends of the of the reserve um, group too that uh, actually um, helps contribute to the maintenance of the of the facility. So I encourage people who to get involved with that. So I've. Um, Every, um, every faith in the fact that this committee is doing a great job, as are most of the committee of managements around our, um, around our um, shire. And so I'm quite pleased to move this um, motion. Thanks, Councillor Hickey. Uh, Councillor Cole. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I agree completely with Councillor Hickey. And just um, re reiterate how lucky we are to live in this area. We have the jewel, the jewel in the crown being um, Mount Lure and Mount Sugarloaf, um, such a beacon with Mount Elephant in the north, and we're in the third largest volcanic plain in the world. Uh, so there's not many other people have one of these things in their backyard, and we're extraordinarily <coughs> lucky with our vistas we have in the area. So thank you, and I have no trouble moving this. Thank you. Councillors, anything further? I'd just like to um, reiterate what you've said, Councillor Hickey and Councillor Cole, and um, thank this is a volunteer committee, and as you'll be aware, Mount Lura is a council asset, um, Mount Sugarloaf uh, National Trust asset, so they do amazing work. <coughs> We've had 20,000 pedestrian visits in the last 12 months, 1,310 volunteer hours, so they've certainly put in a lot of work. Um, four excellent applications for these three positions, so I encourage everyone to get on board, as you mentioned, the the Friends of Mount Lura group and I'd just like to acknowledge really the contribution by Francis Grundy who has re-nominated and been successful this evening. I think Fran's been on this committee from just about the, the inception so a lot of hours um, given to this, this very valuable asset as you say. Councillors, I'll put that to a vote. All in favour? Carried. We have no planning reports, but officers' reports 9.1, Karangamite Community Vision, the 2040 report card. Mrs Lindley, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. The purpose of this report is to provide a mid-term report card on Council's progress towards meeting the obje objectives and aspirations of the Karangamite community as outlined in the Community Vision 2040. The vision describes the community's aspirations for the future of the municipality elaborated in four themes, namely future-proofing, people, 
livability and lifestyle, and prosperity and innovation. The report card looks at each of these four themes and provides a dashboard and commentary on actions and activities that Council has undertaken since June 2021 when the, uh, report, uh, when the vision was actually presented to Council. Uh, the themes have been plotted uh, on a progress matrix with the purpose of identifying any gaps or omissions in the work undertaken so far by Council as an organisation to support the vision identifying any changes in community views or sentiment that councillors and staff have witnessed or experienced over the last couple of years, and identifying any concerns or risks in moving forward to strategies and implementation plans, and finally testing the assumptions made in mapping the council plan with the community vision. The report card is contained in an attachment to the agenda. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mrs Lindley. Councillors? So we'd like to move the recommendation to note the report. Councillor Beard, Councillor Kennedy, seconded. Councillor Beard. Um, yes, thank you and through you, Madam Mayor. I'd just like to acknowledge um, this solely comes down, I'd say, to the organisation. And this is completely <coughs> transparent. This is a voluntary review, um, this report card that we've got in front of us tonight. This doesn't have to be, it's not legislated that we have to do a review or a report card, so to speak, but it just goes to show this council's commitment to such a process um, that has involved um, the community who are at the forefront of everything we do. Uh, I think it's great. We don't often celebrate enough as an organisation the great things we do. You often hear the negative, um, which can be quite degrading or depressing at times, particularly for our staff. But to actually look back on such a report card and see what has been achieved um, as an organisation is something that we should all be very proud of. Um, because it has been instigated by what the community, it's a community vision after all, it's what they've wanted. It does align, as we've said, when we adopted this vision, um, it aligns so well with our community, our council plan that we adopted when we first started our journey together. Um, so it's great to see that not only do the, um, I guess the categories align or the, the I guess what, it, what we see is our priorities, but also the actions. Now those actions can evolve over time depending on what our opportunities are but also as our communities evolve. So it's great that we have backed um, doing such a process as getting a report card and, and just letting the community know that we are, we've listened and we're actually doing what we intended to do. So really this is a big pat on the back to the organisation as a whole. Thank you Madam Thanks, Mayor. Thanks Councillor Beard. Councillor Kennedy. Uh, thank you Madam Mayor and through you. Well Councillor Beard I think took the words off my page. <laughs> Um, and um, I'll, no, no, thank you very much. Um, you've said everything. It's great. Um, but yeah, I sort of remembered that um, the community vision was very much in alignment with our council plan. And I remember at the time we were really, we were really quite pleased about that, and um, felt like that our engagement with our community was um, going well. Um, you know, because we had um, recognised that that alignment existed, but. I agree with Councillor um, Beard that this um, mid-term review, while it's not um, uh, required by right, legislation, is a great indication of Council's sincerity to ensure that that alignment um, continues and that it remains and that uh, we, we're doing our best to work alongside our communities and that we respect our communities' opinions and their aspirations and um, we want to be sure that, you know, that um, we sort of keep working together to achieve um, the, the goals that uh, that have been set in our council plan and that um, and, and the goals that our community have uh, for the 2040 vision. So uh, I, I'm I'm actually really pleased that um, this review has come forward. I think it's a really good marker for us all, and um, it's it's a good um, it's it's been very open and transparent about the work that we're doing, <coughs> and uh, I yeah, certainly am pleased to see it and. Um, and um, support the recommendation before us. Thank you, Councillor Kennedy. Councillors, anything further? I'll put this to a vote, all in favour? It's carried. Item 9.2 is the Hardcourt Maintenance Policy. Uh, Ms Love, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and through you, Councillors, the Hardcourt Maintenance Policy aims to establish the maintenance and upgrade requirements for our Hardcourt facilities and other related infrastructure across the Shire regardless of tenure. Um, the policy has been reviewed with only minor changes and the recommendation is before you.
Thank you, Ms Love. Someone like to move that recommendation, councillors? Councillor Hickey, do I have a seconder? Councillor Macon, thank you. Councillor Hickey. <coughs> um, yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, yes, as uh, Ms Love said, this has only got some small um, changes within the policy, um, but just to uh, the underlying um, purpose of it is to make sure that all the hard courts are in a respectable position. Um, it's very easy to turn up on a day and um, see the courts are in great condition, but there's a lot of planning and a lot of policy behind <coughs> the actual maintenance and the, and the preparation of these courts so, and the hard surfaces. So it's a, it's a, it's a policy that's uh, very well regarded and uh, still provides our community with um, opportunities to be uh, engaged in sport and act outdoor activities uh, throughout, the, throughout the year. So happy to do this. Thanks, Councillor Hickey. Councillor Macon? Thank you, and through you, Madam Mayor. Um, I think this is a great policy. Um, it just shows what can be done, especially in Cobden and Simpson, where their uh, courts have been upgraded quite substantially. Um, and I do note that um, even though some of our courts where we are giving these funds are not actually our... Um, our facilities, that we're just managers of the facilities, it makes it hard sometimes and we need to <coughs> help um, these people and the organisations along as much as we can to um, make sure all these are in working order and up standard and um, that people can play their sport and have enjoyment of playing sport because we know how much it is uh, good for people's wellbeing within the Shire. So I'm more than happy to move this policy. Um, Madam Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Macon. Anything further, councillors? All in favour? It's carried. Item 9.3 is the Cobden Shed Path Solar Lighting. Ms Love, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And through you, councillors, this report is to award a contractor for the procurement of the construction of and installation of solar lighting around the shed path, commonly known as the Circuit de Sauvage, four kilometre trail in, in Cobden. Council has undertaken a quotation process, um, <coughs> excuse me, based on the expected estimated cost. However, in accordance with Council's procurement policy, due to the quota <coughs> prices received, uh, it is now required to be awarded by Council. Uh, solar lighting has been proposed to improve the lighting uh, around the trail with the aim of um, creating more accessible, user-friendly uh, participation and promote greater safety as well as environmental sustainable options. An evaluation of the six submissions that were received has been uh, undertaken by a panel of council officers who have had experience in, in such a role. Uh, there is a variance on the preferred contractor of approximately $83,000 uh, over what uh, council's nominated budget was. This project is being funded by local roads and community infrastructure funding. Uh, however, given the shortfall, there will be a requirement for Council to consider uh, funding that shortfall through one of three options. Uh, councillors, the um, evaluation of the submissions proposes that the best outcome and financial benefit for Council is by awarding the contract in full to Lead Sun and the recommendation is before you. Thank you, Ms Love. Councillors, I want to move this recommendation. Councillor Beard, do I have a seconder? Councillor Macon, thank you. Councillor Beard. Through you, Madam Mayor, and of course it was going to be me that was going to move that motion. Um, I think you looked directly at me. Um, this is an exciting project that has literally been bubbling away for a few years or a couple of years now, and I really thank Council's commitment to this project and thank them for their support. Um, this is going to mean a lot to the multiple people that use this walking track morning, noon and night. This, this track gets so much use. And um, we recently had the resurfacing done. It's literally an all accessible track for so many people, um, which we don't often find that in all our communities. So we know Cobden community knows how lucky they are to have this path. If I rewind it back, people might wonder why it's called Circuit de Sauvage. Um, and it's literally in the way in which you say it, but it's really in honour of a previous councillor, Evan Savage, Councillor Evan Savage, who this was his his vision, his baby, I guess you could call it, um, who when he was on council, this was his um, this was his project and he saw it through and the, com the community in honour of him nicknamed it Circuit de Sauvage and, and it certainly stuck. So um, it's great now that we're going to have the lighting of it, as, as Miss Love said, around um, not only for accessibility but also for safety and security. <coughs> 
Um, we already have a few solar lights that are um, activity. Um, I'm trying to think of the wording, Mrs. Love, really that they come on when there's activity or movement, movement activated. activated. That's it, that's the word. Um, and it works so well, and people actually rely on them now. So they always let us know if there hasn't been enough sun and maybe they're not um, working well enough, or the canopy of the trees of the golf course are particularly obscuring the sunlight. But it just goes to show how much the community are relying upon that lighting now. So to actually see that that whole walking circuit will now be um, lit, it's really exciting. So um, thank you again, Council, for supporting this project. It really is going to mean a lot to a lot of people. And, and it will just, it, it just ticks all the box, boxes around our health and wellbeing and around pe giving people that better livability and be able to continue on with their exercise in the community. So it's great. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Beard. Councillor Aitken. Thank you. And through you, Madam Mayor, I don't have much to add. I think Councillor Beard has summed it up quite well. Um, but I do often drive past this trail or track or <coughs> circuit. Circuit. Circuit, sorry. <laughs> and there's always someone on there, whether they're running, riding, walking or whatever they may be doing. But it is a very well used track and it, it is very, um, very nice to have some lighting on there because I know people are exercising at odd hours at this time of year and everything else and it's always nice to have some light there. So um, this will be a great little project and as... Um, it was mentioned before we have been working on this for five years so it's great to see this come through and finally get done so it's fantastic so thank you madam mayor thanks councillor macon councillors any further all in favor carried item 9.4 is the port campbell town centre revitalization 2023 works mrs lindley please thank you madam mayor uh, the purpose of this report is to provide the assessment and recommendation of the tender evaluation panel for the 2023 works package tender for the Port Campbell Town Centre revitalisation project. Tenders for the 2023 works package closed on the 24th of March 2023. The project is the largest single project that Crankamont Shire has undertaken and seeks to strengthen and improve the functionality and amenity of Port Campbell's Town Centre. It has been a long time in the making. Uh, Council first released a tender for the Port Campbell Town Centre project on the 17th of December 2021. Unfortunately, no tenders were received for the project at that time. It was then separated into two works packages titled 2022 Works and 2023 Works, and the 2022 tender was released on the 16th of May last year. And despite several downloads of the tender package, Council received only one submission which, following an evaluation, was not recommended to proceed. Consequently, Council managed multiple smaller packages of works and resources via a quotation process. And the first of these packages, a footpath creating a link in the town between Lord Street via Morris and Tregay Street to Cairns Street, was completed in November and December 2022 by Council's works team. <coughs> Three other small packages of works, including minor road works, landscaping, pedestrian safety improvements and parking upgrades were undertaken in February and March this year. For the larger packages of work, Council undertook a publicly advertised expression of interest process in October, November last year, with five companies responding. These expressions of interest were then evaluated by an internal panel and, were, and these companies were then invited to respond to a tender process. The 2023 works package, articulated in three separable packages of works, was released to these five companies in December 2022 and the tenders closed on the 24th of March 2023. Three tender responses of these five were received and have been evaluated by an internal tender evaluation panel. The panel's confidential evaluation report and recommendation has been provided to Council. The panel recommends that Council not award separable package three as part of contract 202-3017, Port Campbell Town Centre, uh, that Council award separable package two as part of the contract to Civil Now, inclusive of the foreshore works transferred from separable package one for the sum of $5,150,000, excluding GST, subject to Civil Now agreeing to work with Council to value manage materials and construction methods. 
Thirdly, that Council authorise the CEO to negotiate further with the preferred tenderer, Civil Now, to value manage the Cairns Street portion of separable package one and award within budget. Point four, authorise the CEO to negotiate with the preferred tenderer, Civil Now, to value manage the remainder of separable package one, namely Lord Street, and award if the revised scope fits within budget. Point five, authorises the CEO to make variations to the project where necessary to ensure the completion of the contract. And finally, point six, affixes the common seal of council to the contract. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mrs Lingley. Councillors, almost a momentous occasion, really. We're <coughs> finally getting this under, well, it's already underway, we're keeping it afloat. Someone like to move that motion that Mrs Lindley has just read. Thank you, Councillor Macon. Do I have a seconder? <coughs> Councillor Macon. Thank you. Councillor Macon. Thank you. I'm through you, Madam Mayor. Apologies. Um, wow. I'm, I'm going to be channeling Councillor Vogels here, and this is a really weird <laughs> feeling. <laughs> um, who knows what would come out of Councillor Vogels' mouth. But anyway, I'll try my best. Um, largest project that the Crane Mark Driver have undertaken, that is just huge and great and fantastic, just shows what we can do when we put our minds to it. Um, so this is to improve functionality and better meet the needs of the locals and um, this will definitely deliver that in spades, that is for sure. And we li did listen um, when we needed to as to how this tender process needed to happen. We split it up and made it more um, appealing to people to apply and um, put in those tenders. Because we all know workforce is very short at the <coughs> moment, but we feel this is the best way going forward. Um, but honestly, let's get the work done, let's get on with it, let's let's do something, let's show the locals how great the Cranmark Shire can get projects done and delivered. Um, we, we've we been waiting a while for this one, but um, I'm sure um, Councillor Vogels will be quite pleased to see this go through um, this meeting today and award Civil Now the contract. Um, and splitting it up the way we are, it just means we get little parcels of bits done here and there, but then we don't interrupt the busy tourist season either. We've managed to make sure that everything's put away, tools are down for the busy times, but then everything gets picked back up and gets done again. So I'm looking forward to seeing um, how this um, uh, evolves and how it all goes um, and how it's being managed by Aaron down there. Um, it'll be great. It'll be just it would be just fantastic. I just yeah, I can't say much more than we are pleased to get this off the ground and finally get some dirt dug and everything else like that. So thank you, Madam Mayor. Thanks, Councillor May. Can you do very well, <laughs> Councillor Vogels? Uh, Councillor Hickey. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, and I too would also um, mm -hmm. um, have preferred Councillor Vogels be here to speak to this project since he's had a big part of it. But this is a, mo a momentous occasion um, to have this uh, finally going to. Um, going to the, to the works. The, um, of course, the funding has been made by local government, by state government, and the collaboration of federal governments. So all popping in together to actually make this, uh, make this project a reality. Um, I would like to mention the, um, the dexterity of our, of our officers to be able to work through the difficulties in getting this project up and running because it has been some very, very um, well, bigger hurdles what you'd normally expect in a, in a, in a uh, project. Uh, the very fact that there's big buildings or big projects going on around the state that's consuming a lot of the resources. Um, the budget is, is always going to be um, challenged in, in a project that's, that's ongoing like this. And of course the, um, the, the contractor's capability within our immediate region have all been challenging to, um, to this project. So it's great to be able to see that this is now ready to, uh, ready to go. And um, yes, I think the, um, the, the, when the first sods are turned over, it's going to be a very exciting, very exciting moment. Thanks, Councillor Hickey. Councillors, <coughs> anything further? Councillor Kennedy. Well, thank you, Madam Mayor, and through you, and um, thank you, Councillor Hickey and Councillor Macon, for your words. Um, Krangamot Shire actually has always had a good reputation for delivery. Um, and, you know, we can make decisions here in our meetings as councillors, but, you know, it takes the senior officers, the managers, and the staff in the organisation to actually make um, things happen. Uh, you know, this is one of the biggest projects that we've ever done, but you know, the current market that we're in at the moment has really um, created quite a few issues and hurdles uh, in terms of um, getting 
things done and um, the journey to delivery has probably not been the one that we might have anticipated um, and it's become very different and a bit of an up and down sort of uh, road so far. But I've just been so impressed by the agility and the out of the box thinking um, of our um, senior officers and managers um, to sort of achieve solutions to the to the challenges and um, to progress the project. And I think it was really smart thinking um, to split um, the works into multiple packages and you know to make it uh, more manageable, um, increasing our scope. <coughs> to achieve the, uh, de the delivery of this project and uh, make sure that it's managed successfully. And I wanted to acknowledge that because, you know, I've listened so many times in briefings to, you know, all the issues that have been and challenges that have come along with this project and I think you've just been really, really clever in, in working through all of those challenges and uh, here we are, we're at a point where, you know, we're getting some progress and we're getting some works on the ground. So thank you so much for all those efforts and I appreciate it very much and I'm proud of it. <laughs> well done Councillor Canady. Councillors? Councillor Beard? Um, yes and through you Madam Mayor and thank you to my pre uh, fellow councillors who have previously spoken, completely agree with everything and yeah it's disappointing that um, Councillor Vogels isn't here because he's been such an important or integral part of um, I guess that conduit between the community and and the Shire. So um, I just I know that he would be disappointed he's not able to be here tonight. Can I just reiterate how incredible it is when you have three levels of government working together and, and the funding allocation by not only the state government, current state government, but the um, previous federal government who had the foresight to back this project. Um, everyone's seen how important the Shipwreck Coast Master Plan was and this being um, an integral part of that. Um, being acknowledged that Port Campbell Street Kate, Streetscape project um, was based as a world tourism, a world class tourism project. Now that's a pretty mean feat for us to live up to and usually we allocate no more than probably, I think one of our biggest streetscape projects has been just over a million dollars. So to, to be normally sitting at that for an average streetscape project and then to be looking at one at almost 16 million, um, it's pretty significant. And to know that we've got the expertise within our staff and, and the fact that they've got a project manager who is helping them through this process and, and being there <coughs> with the community, um, it's really significant. Um, we were pretty completely out of our depth on this one and we know what the stakes are when it comes to this delivering this project um, and trying to get that balance between <coughs> getting it right with the sympathetic approach and the sensitivities with the Port Campbell community. Um, so by having this staged approach, even though it wasn't ideal at the time and obviously the costings haven't always been ideal either, I think we're giving it the best chance it possibly can be of being delivered the best way it can. Um, so I want to reiterate, reiterate just the thanks to, I guess, the community for being patient with us and being involved in the engagement process, but more importantly, the staff and our staff that have gone to every length to make sure that we get the best out of um, the funding that we've got. No one wants to waste money and um, no one no one also wants to see the blowouts too. So I think in managing it in this staged approach is really, um, it's honest and it's transparent and I think it's the best way forward. But I think the best thing is that we're actually going to see work getting done and I think it's going to be something really exciting we can all be really proud of. Um, I know I'm excited, it has been, as you know, <laughs> it's been something that's been hanging around for so long um, and people probably think it's never going to get done, but it's actually going to get done and awarding this contract is huge, it's huge dollars, it's a, it, as you said, it's a, it's a momentous occasion for this council, it's the biggest project we're ever undertaking um, and to be honest, I don't think we'll ever probably do it again. So um, <laughs> we probably don't want to. <laughs> no, but it is exciting for the. It's not just Port Campbell. This is something significant for the entire region. Yeah, Thank absolutely, you. Councillor Beard. And I'm just thinking back. What's well, been on the books for so long now, and the amount of consultation and discussion we've had um, with all the stakeholders, and you know, going back to when we began this journey, and Mr. Ian Gibb was uh, mm. the Director of Sustainable Development. Rory Neeson managed the project for a long time. I'm sure Andrew Mason. <coughs> is probably well, perhaps having a glass of champagne to celebrate that this is underway good and proper. So 
Without any further comments or questions, councillors, I'll put it to a vote. All those in favour? Carried. I hope Councillor Vogels is watching too from this holiday. <coughs> uh, councillors, quick, just as important, the quick response grant allocation for this month. Thank you, Mrs Lindley. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. The Quick Response Grants Program has a fixed budget that Council provides annually for the distribution of funds to shy community groups. The program has a rolling intake and this flexible approach allows Council to allocate small amounts to various community groups resulting in positive outcomes for the community. For the month of April, five applications have been received. One from the Karangamite Hockey Club towards the purchase of hockey equipment for indoor play. One to the first Noora Scout Group for the replacement of a damaged gazebo for use on camps. <coughs> One to the Pombinay Cricket Club towards the replacement of a television for coaching and presentation purposes. One to the Terang Squash Club towards the purchase of six rackets to encourage junior participation and membership and the final one to the Clan Donald Victoria Society towards the promotion and event costs for a Cayley at the Copper Co Hall. Thank you Mrs Lindley. Councillors, there is a recommendation to approve those grant applications. Someone would like to move. Thank you Councillor Cole. <laughs> Since you haven't got Councillor Vogels to do it here this evening, and is there a, sec yeah, is there a seconder? Thank you, Councillor. You can answer the call. Uh, thank you, Madam <coughs> Mayor, and through you. Um, yeah, I've sorry. spoken many times about this, <coughs> and it's a bit hard to come up with something new, but I'll have a go. Um, now, they, these are they're all small grants, small amounts of money, but they make a world of difference. And you know, the Krangamite Hockey Club, Nurat Scout Group. Um, Pomeroy Cricket Club, they're all getting small things that make a, a big difference to their running of their organisations and um, keeping them floating along, ticking along. You know, the Terrain Squash Club buying rackets for the juniors makes it an admirable thing uh, to, to be able to encourage youth to take up an activity and get them away from a screen and doing something physical. Um, and th those are the sorts of things we like to see. The thing we'd also like to see is that when the quotes come in for this is that they're looking to shop, shop locally if possible um, and getting quotes from local businesses to encourage the money being spent in the area so we get double whammy out of it and it, it keeps the money rolling around the shire. Um, there's still money available too in a lot of spots so people up north I know still got some money available so get your grants in soon please. So thanks no thanks Councillor Cole. Councillor Hickey. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. And um, look, I agree with whatever Councillor Cole has just uh, said there. For the, um, <laughs> for, for off the cuff, that was very, very good. Uh, but look, they that, do make a bit of difference. But uh, please, we, when your applications are due or looking at due, make sure you uh, speak to the council, the members of the, um, of the staff, to the officers, and just make sure that you tick all the boxes um, to expedite the programs. A simple process, but you just need to do a little bit of homework before. Uh, before you make an application, so I'm very happy to second this motion. Thanks, Councillor Hickey. Anything further, councillors? All in favour? <coughs> Carried. Councillors, is there any other business this evening? <coughs> no, we'll move to open forum, and I believe Mr Glazebrook, you wanted to speak during open forum? Correct. If you'd just like to come to the lectern, please. John Glazebrook from Terang. I'm here to speak about uh, a couple of issues that are impacting on the libraries in Karangamite. And they are that the state government has suspended all uh, interlibrary borrowing rights across Victoria. That's meaning that uh, people like me interested in books do not have access to important sources of knowledge and books that are available in other libraries across the state <coughs> that had been previously made available to residents and readers in this area. No longer available, I believe that's due to austerity policies and cuts. And uh, that's been the case all this year. <coughs> uh, secondly, I'm also concerned that the uh, Terang and other libraries are only operating on a part-time basis because that 
I believe that there's evidence that that needs to change. Many people in this shire are interested in books and the, the evidence for that is that in the Terang Plaza there's now an informal book exchange that's been set up by residents because the, the library here is only open and available on a part-time basis. We don't have access to the library on important days during the week. Um, further, I also feel that at Tarang, the library service has been a low priority by the council. And I, I don't think that's really a fair go, which is part of, there are people in this community that are interested in books because that at, at this time, the, only, the other thing that's changed apart from government policy on borrowing is the broader context in this community, health. And I need access to health services because I have been, you will not get a lot of information from the medical clinic or because they, they're too full up with their own bookings here. The Terang Mort Lake Hospital, you won't get, go to, they won't look at you unless you're just about ready to die. So people are more and more now reliant on the information that they can get through the library service about public health issues and public health is an increasingly important matter because people are still dying from COVID across Victoria. That's a fact. And people are still being infected and hospitalised because of COVID in Victoria. You're not going to read a lot about it in the, uh, the, the News Limited Press or The Age or the Sydney Morning Herald because it doesn't fit in with their political perspective on life. But you will hear about it in the ABC every Friday. The data is still coming out. So and at this time, <coughs> in this important changing context, I believe it's only fair that the community have, that our libraries be upgraded, our policies on libraries need to be reviewed and revitalised. Uh, to uh, be more appropriate for the changing circumstances in the wider community. And I, I have listed points here, increased library services to provide users <coughs> with a wider range of perspectives, options and knowledge, which is not available in publications like the Women's Weekly or New ID that are on subscription service. I'm advocating that all the Shire's libraries be open full time in future and made above available free of charge for community groups. There's a lot of volunteers already working here in in Karangamai Chaya. There's a progress association that's made up of many volunteers. There's the there's the state uh, cemetery trust, which consists of volunteers. There's a lot of people who work as volunteers with their time, and I am sure that there are people in the community who give their time who are assisting with expanding the library services. And I think further evidence of the downgrading of, of uh, Karangamai Chai's policy uh, in relation to libraries is the fact that the e-news barely ever rates a libraries get a mention. They don't really ever get a mention in the e-news, let alone what's happening with public health or let alone promoting any books that might be of use to residents in the local community. So I think the council has been derelict in its duty in relation to policies on libraries in this Karangamite Shire. And I think I myself have put in a submission to the relevant minister for government on this issue because I think the, the policy on the um, reducing the rights of people to be able to borrow from libraries who have important resources in other locations or other jurisdictions <laughs> in Victoria, that policy needs to be revisited. And I hope that, that uh, Karanga might try this council will call on the state government to do the same thing. Because I think they're dumbing down the community by, by denying access to resources that are available elsewhere in the library service and due, just due to budget cuts and mistakes that have been made with government policies, with uh, spending 
policies. So, so I think um, uh, the other argument that I've been given is that oh, everything's going to be okay is now because we have digitisation. It's going to solve all your problems. Well, that's the greatest load of rubbish I ever heard. Digitisation is not. It's going to cre also create a lot of problems. It might bring in some new efficiencies, but it's all also going to. That's if if digitisation is the solution for our <coughs> problems. Why then? Why then? Our government's now moving to ban iPhones in in state in schools right across the state and across the country. <coughs> moving to impose heavily penalties because people get addicted to their iPhones. <coughs> they break up their concentration and the digitisation is dominated by the advertising. The same psychology or business model that's behind conventional media. To, they, don't, they want you to concentrate and to become part of the consumer ideology. They, they don't want us to be uh, literate and, and uh, and not loyal to their uh, services or to think for ourselves. So I hope that that uh, this this um, council will ask the the Victorian government to reverse its policy on uh, borrowing rights across Victoria and also review the policies here with a view of opening up and extending the hours of operation for all the libraries currently in Karangamite Shire. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr Glazebrook. Um, we did receive uh, your letter, so I'll ask uh, Ms Love to respond on behalf of Council, particular, particularly with the areas that you've um, raised around the libraries. Ms Love. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you, I'm pleased to be able to say that Public Libraries Victoria will be relaunching uh, the courier services on the 1st of May. So patrons will still have access to uh, resources from across the Shared Services Consortium um, and this will be communicated to our residents imminently. Uh, in terms of support for our libraries, we last year established a shared service arrangement with Moyne Shire. So we are waiting for the first year of operation uh, to, uh, to be completed uh, and, and at which time we will do a review including reviewing the opening hours um, for, for each of our branches. The upcoming budget, the draft budget, has a continued allocation of $65,000 towards the collection for library materials uh, and also half a million dollars continued support towards our library branches and our library staff to provide that um, essential service to our community. Um, Volunteers are actually supporting our library services at the moment. Uh, we would actively uh, um, support more volunteers, of course, but we do have a, a handful of volunteers who are supporting um, various uh, branches. In terms of charging for library services, we can't charge for li library services at the moment, so they are free of charge. We're not permitted to charge for library services under our agreement with the state government funding. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Ms Love, and, and um, just for your information, Mr Glazebrook, we've been campaigning for years and years and years to have the state government uh, provide more funding to our library service. Many well, years ago, it used to be a 30% uh, local contribution, 70% state, and now it's it's actually worse and it's actually totally reversed. So. Um, libraries, library, of use, library, library users and operators right across Victoria have certainly been trying to get uh, state government to take up their... Um, that figure is 65,000. That was the same figure as last year. And that's <coughs> the inflation has been running at 10%. That, thank you, Mr Glazebrook, but that's the, that's the amount that's been allocated at this stage in, in a draft budget and you're more than welcome to make a submission to the budget. I've, I've done that. Good, thank you. Um, Mr CEO, is there any questions online? No, there's not. No. In that case, I will conclude the meeting and I'll thank uh, those here this evening in attendance and thank you for those who may be watching online. Good evening.